Hey, Gary Hoover here. I've got this idea. I've talked about it in a couple of my speeches. It's itching to get into one of my little YouTube videos here. It's a little story. It's about foreigners and foreign manufacturing and things like that. So let me go through the story. So if you go back where I grew up in Indiana, if you go back to the 1880s and studied history, I think you'd find that the people in Indiana said, well, of course, we're Hoosiers from Indiana. We're the best. And we make wonderful uh, farm implements, farm equipment, plows, and all that. Now, those guys over in Ohio, particularly Springfield, Ohio, those Buckeyes, they make plows too. But you know you really can't trust those Buckeyes. You know if you buy a plow from them, you're sending your jobs to Ohio. We need to support our local companies. We need to buy Indiana-made plows. Then... Fast forward, I don't know, 70 years or whatever, 1950s, Indiana, Midwestern manufacturing. By then, we're the auto parts center of the world, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan. My hometown was a huge General Motors center. Oh, they're building plants in the south. You know, those Confederates, those rebels, can't really trust them. You know they can't know how to make a great product. We're where real car parts come from. Man, I shouldn't be putting those plants down there in the south. And Grand Rapids, Michigan, a big furniture center. Oh, they're doing furniture in the South now. And the old textile mills in Massachusetts. Oh, they're doing textile in the South. That's 1950s, 1960s. Come forward to today as I travel in Indiana and other places. Don't mean to just pick on my home state. Oh, those Chinese. They're putting all the factories in China. They're taking all these jobs from us. Woe is us. It's the end of the world. Well, my little story, for me, the conclusions include these. All the people that whined about losing those jobs never changed how it turned out. They put their energy into whining and complaining. They didn't change the outcome. History moved as it was meant to move and organically moved ahead. But they took the energy they might have used to create new businesses, new ideas, new innovations, and put it into that fighting, into that bring back this old stuff, stop change. Well, I'm a funny person that way. I love history. And, and sometimes I look back and say, oh, it was so cool back then. But I know, no, it's so much cooler today. And the future is so much cooler than today. Uh, I mean, today is so much cooler than yesterday, and the future will be cooler than today. Um, I believe in the concept of progress. And we may be uh, two steps forward and one backward, and there may be some aspects of our lives where we aren't making a lot of progress, traffic in Austin. But overall, our society has made enormous gains in the welfare of the average person, the size of the global middle class. It's, uh, it's staggering how many middle class people there are today. In fact, I was thinking the other day, the rise of middle class countries. Because let's face it, we used to have rich countries and poor countries, and there weren't a lot in the middle. And yet, if you look today, the average global per capita income, I think, is about $10,000 or the GDP. And, and, and there's a lot of countries at 12 and 14 and 16 and 18,000 that are way behind the U.S., which are like 40 or, or so, whatever, and the other really wealthy countries. So we have a lot more middle class countries than we ever had before and a lot of middle class people. The thing is, in so many ways, and, and life expectancy, and how many women die in childbirth, and how many people can read, literacy, any measure you look at, the world gets better and better, longer term. I'm not saying over like the last six minutes, or even six years. I'm talking about 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. But as part of that process, things change and things move. And in the case of manufacturing that I referenced, um, it's just going down globally. It's a smaller share of total employment and total jobs for the whole globe. Part of that's just automation and everything. It's become a service economy, uh, which is great, because services aren't just flipping burgers. I mean, Madonna's a service worker. Barack Obama's a service worker. Every actor, every athlete, you know, every lawyer, every doctor, every airline pilot, and a lot of people that aren't quite that well paid. Uh, construction workers, store managers managers, um, bankers. Um, but the bottom line for me is when you look at these change, because we see so many people and so many politicians and stuff talking about, oh, let's get the uh, manufacturing back or whatever. And I've talked about in some other video blogs, but that thing, it just, when I look at how they felt in Indiana, time after time after time trying to fight change, how do we stop it? And they never have. 
They never have. As an entrepreneur, I want to lead change. I want to be out in front of it. I was speaking recently to a group of uh, Texas people about how to create jobs in Texas. I said, look, as an entrepreneur in Texas, one of my top goals should be to create jobs in China and India. And some jaws dropped. I said, look, they're going to they're going to be a billion more jobs in China. You want them working for a Chinese company or working for me or for Michael Dell, you know? And and the best way for me to create jobs in Texas is to create jobs overseas. Because there are certain things that shouldn't be done in the United States. We shouldn't be uh, making brooms. I saw a guy at a broom factory in Illinois and he was crying about losing to the overseas people. American talent shouldn't be used to make brooms. You know, that better goes overseas. And even China will lose a lot of those manufacturing jobs in coming years to Southeast Asia and to Africa and so on. So my thing is be wary of all that and, and understand there's a bigger picture there. There are bigger patterns, the one that I've described. Because I really don't want to have to go back to Indiana in 100 years when I'm 160 and say, oh, you guys are all worried about the jobs going to the moon now. Oh, I've heard this before. Get ahead of the curve. Lead the curve. Make change. Make the most of it. Help make the world a better place. Think like an entrepreneur. This is Gary Hoover. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.